Hey everybody, this is going to be part two of controlling your Christmas lights with a Raspberry Pi. Let's go. Okay, if you haven't gone back and watched um, part one, it's back in on my channel. Um, if you want to like and subscribe uh, to the channel, YouTube doesn't uh, advertise any of us smaller channels, so if you like and subscribe, then that helps us if you share the videos, if you know other people that are going to try and do this and set up the Raspberry Pis and, and be kind of makers, right? Be it's in the it's in the maker space kind of thing and being able to set all this up. And it, and it's fun. So um, the first one we did um, checking out the board and how we have the board wired and how that all connects and how you get power and that power, how that power is distributed. Today we're going to jump into the Raspberry Pi and get that configured and set up to to run. Um, so first things first, let's uh, jump right on here. This I've I have the Raspberry Pi set up. <clears throat> I have VNC loaded on it so that I can remote into it and do things and and do the videos and stuff. Originally, so when you plug in this module, it's the FTDI module, right? So Originally, um, I had to uh, grab libraries, do compiling, and and actually build the the library. But now um, you can type. Um, whoops, let's go here. Right now you can type in if you have Python. So this is a fairly newer build. So I have Python three um, installed. We can go sudo Python three and do pip install pylib ftdi. Now I already have it installed, so I don't want to run through that install again, uh, but that's what we need to do. Just sudo pylib dash m pip install pylib ftdi. Now this, like I said, this used to be really long and drawn out and everything, but um, now it's now it's pretty, pretty quick and easy. So another inf bit of information that we need is where our module is plugged in um, and we need some information about it. So we need these two pieces of information right here. This is the the vendor and the product ID. So we'll remember that 0403 and the 6001. Um, but now we need to find out what our address is of our relay that's plugged into our Raspberry Pi. So I can just pull up the um, just the little editor shell here, and I need to do a from pylib ftdi import driver. So this is going to get me. I think this is a capital D uh, import driver. So we're gonna. We're going to run that, and that's going to load the driver module out of our FTDI uh, library. Then we can type driver dot list devices, just like that. Now that's going to go out, and that's going to find my my FTDI, and this is what it is: FT two forty five R USB. And this right here, this is the little, this is the address that. I send commands to when I go to set up my strip script. So I need to know this this value, this number right here. Because when I go and I load, let's go file, uh, recent files, controller, and I go down in the, well, I have another copy of the controller here. When I go to my controller, which is here, here we go, here, and I come down here and I go, and I'm telling it to pick the relay, I need this number that I just found here, this A8008UU0. Now your serial number is gonna be different, that's how it addresses. And if I added a second device, they would have another um, another ID there that we're able to use. Okay, so, so that's getting, so now I know I can, I have my FT, FTDI library loaded, I have the address that I can use to publish commands and send commands to, to be in order to hit the bitbang device, which is what's in the script is bitbang device, because here from now we'll load pylib ftdi in the actual script that's called a bitbang device, and that's what we use to send the commands to 
the Raspberry Pi and to the relay. Okay, so now we need to do something else. So what I have problems with, the next problem is whenever I run the program, if I'm not running it as root, um, it doesn't allow access to the USB drivers. So we need to come back to the command line. I need to go CD at C udev rules D. And in this directory, oops, let me correct that, dash LH, okay. In this directory, there's usually just this 99 com rules. So we need to create a file that's called 40 dash FTDI rules. So if I look at this file, uh, where'd it go? 40 tab, there we go. If I look at this file, it has some information. So the product ID, which was 6001, which we saw earlier, and the vendor number, which is 0403, which we saw earlier, and then the mode and and all of that is is the same. I'll have this code and, and everything in here um, in the notes and, and everything else of the video. So don't worry about not being able to see like the end of the line or, or anything like that. Um, because I'll have this all in the show notes. But this is what we need to know, this product ID and the vendor number, which we saw before in when we did the list USB. So that's where we get those. And the modes and everything else we can leave leave the same. Typically, your, your product and vendor are going to be these codes, but um, if you happen to find one that's a little bit different, uh, that might be where we have to adjust that. Okay. So now we have that. Now that we have all of that done... And together now, if we since we'll have to re I, there's a command you can use to reload these rules, but I just rebooted my Raspberry Pi. Seemed to be the quickest, fastest, most easiest, and most most for sure way that it's going to reload those rules. So I just did that, quick and easy uh, for a Raspberry Pi. Um, so now that we have those rules in place, I can use my a normal user to read and write to my USB device and make my relay work and I know that I have the library for my FTDVI device loaded. So now let's get into the code that's here. Okay. So here we have we it's it's only I mean I went a little crazy. It's 138 lines of code. I could make this like hugely shorter but um, I added a few things for myself but um, so we need time because I need to be able to click off time and know what time to launch these things um, we need uh, the module CSV because we are going to load the sequencing file from a text file that's comma delimited uh, of course I need to have date time so I know my dates uh, the Pi game um, I'm going to import the mixer because that's what I'm going to use to play the audio. So then here we go, my PyLib FTDI. I'm importing the Bitbang device, which is my relay. Um, if you want to use email, then you need to use the SMTP Live. If you're going to send a message, you also need email.message import email message. So um, my Raspberry Pi, the Wi-Fi adapter is not real, doesn't work really well. Um, so sometimes it'll have trouble connecting to uh, email to send email out. So I've commented all that out in the base base setup. Okay, so also you can import random in case I want to do some random numbers, uh, different things like that. Um, then we need to initialize everything here in the beginning. Um, the mixer time, um, I keep track of what's going on with this action triggered variable. Um, I define relay one as this bitbang device, um, potentially. I, if I get a second relay, I can do relay two and give it its device ID, and then I'll be able to address two relays and have 16 channels instead of, of eight. I set some base colors here, white, blue, green, and red, and those are their bit bang numbers that I need to send. So when I use those later, I can just call them by their name. Um, then my to and from email um, information for sending notifications when it starts, stops, when uh, songs play and things like that. Um, we have the setup for the email. Um, I'm using Google Send Mail, so uh, we're using uh, the TLS 
you know, secure mail communication in here. Um, like I said, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I probably need to build, you know, some type of error processing around it where if it doesn't send mail that we can continue it, but I haven't done that yet. Um, but here we come down to this part here, this part where it says play song and the track number. So I have four tracks here. I have a Jingle Bells, an O Holy Night, a Wish You a Merry Christmas, and Carol the Bells. So this is, so here with the media line here, when it gets to the track, this is the MP3 file that the mixer is going to play. And then I have a sequence file that is a comma separated file that has all of the numbers that turns all the switches on and off. Now I have a, a media length and a, and a track length. Now, the track length is the length of the, how many lines are in the CSV file. The media length, what I do is I come down to where it is playing and I do a, I uncomment this and I say print mixer music get position. Then that prints that position of where the music is on the screen. And then when it gets down uh, to the end, you have to kill the, kill the script really quickly. And that will give you, that high number will give you the length of your music and ticks there. So my new, I used to try and do a, a pause, like send the light commands, and then pause so many milliseconds, then send light commands, and then pause so many milliseconds. And it wasn't working, the timing would get off, so I had to switch. And now I do some math, which is the mixer position divided by the media length times the track length. So that's basically, uh, Y, you know, X over Y over the media length equals X over the track length so that I'm keeping them in the same position. You solve for X in the pro in the equation and then that gets you my position and that helps me to print out and plug in what code, what position I need here in X to display the lights. So, and this is just adding all these numbers together and that gives me the number to send to to the lights. So how the lights work, right, is it's it's binary. So it's kind of 8-bit binary. So if you want light 1 to come on, you send a 1. If you want light 2 to come on, you send a 2. If you want lights 1 and 2 to be on, you send 3. So and same way all the way up to 128, you know, adding all of the, the numbers up. Um, so, but down towards the bottom is just the basic part of the code. Um, that right here, this here is a test for me just to force playing a song. So you can set up different times like I have at 0, 15, and 30, and um, and 45, it plays a chime. I have a bell around here somewhere, and whenever um, it's at the quarter hours, the bell will chime once. Then at the top of the hour, the bell chimes the number of the hour. So at eight o'clock, the bell will chime eight times. So um, then here we're triggering songs at nine minutes after the hour and 39 minutes after the hour and is playing one song. And then at 19 minutes and 49 minutes after the hour, we're playing another song. I need to add more here because I'm going to have four songs at some point um, so that I, I can play more songs and have a little more variety. Um, in what songs are playing and play a few more songs during during the evening and have things play a lot more. Okay, so That's kind of the basics of the code that lets me go through and be able to Send the commands and and run it on this Raspberry Pi and since since I redid the uh, this equation here that sets how long it is and gets me my exact position and what data to send out for what lights to trigger on and off. It's been pretty accurate. I think I showed, in, if you look back in video one, part one, I show the, you know, the carol of the bells. And when the bells come on, you can see the one relay just click on and off, you know, right with the bells. And it's it's been pretty good. And I'm really liking how that's, how that's working. So um, I might do some other edits in here. Um, once I get the final code for this done, um, which should be in the next week or so, I'll probably put it out. Um, I put all of my code out on Bitbucket. There's links um, 
in the description and links at uh, tomstechshow.com website. All of that is all there. Um, so if you know Python, then you can you know adjust this however you want. If you see some better way to do something, um, then for sure, you know, update it as you see fit and as you want to use it. Okay. All right. So that's how to get stuff onto the Raspberry Pi. So get your code there, get the FTDI library loaded, uh, find out where your device is and what what your uh, serial number is of the device so that you can put it in there and be able to address it right from that value. Okay. So that's kind of, that's part two. Um, there will be a part three, which is uh, going to be uh, making the synchronization files, making those sequencing files that allow me to send send these commands. Uh, if I bring up one of these files for sequencing, let me get files here. Uh, let's go uh, documents, light controller. Okay, we'll open one here just so you can kind of see what what gets outputted. So you see there's all these zeros, and here you see there's some fours, fours, fours. So each, like, so this will be where one shows up, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, and 128. I know it's kind of, I could have it add them all up and put them together, but this kind of makes it easier for me to see uh, where where the different numbers are going. So there's a four, there's an eight, I see those. Um, if there's any gaps, you know, that I don't want, like, uh, so that's like, instantly, there was another one up here that had, you know, there's eights and then there's like overlap. So I could actually take these if I wanted to be really accurate and set those to zero and move or move one of these to eight. So I could kind of manipulate it a little bit um, and move that around intricately inside these files. Um, but I've only done that a few times. If I see something that's really off, then I can just manipulate that CSV file. Um, but that's kind of how those those break down. And you'll see how that exports from the uh, Vixen uh, light controller uh, system, which of course is made for huge systems, but we're dealing with things on the cheap as uh, I'm just using the Raspberry Pi and not some big gigantic controller thing. So, but this makes it fun because it's using all these things to try and put them together and make, you know, the lights and everything work and blink and all that. Um, so, okay. So next one is next video in a few days will be the sequencing in Vixen and how I create these CSV files and match them up to the movie music to get uh, the pattern for how the lights are going to move. All right. So that's that. Okay. So thanks for watching this video. Um, if you have any questions about how I'm doing something or any part of the code or anything like that, um, if you're trying to do this on your own, you know, definitely comment and share, you know, kind of the methods that you're using and what you're doing and then help other people out. Um, so there you go. All right. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for part three. All right. Take care. Mm -hmm.